It's Saturday, May 12th, 2018, and it's uh, time for my tens. The Saturday show. It's not changed. So, by you'll see in the title, my ten favorite Colorado Rockies. Uh, now, of course, there was a lot of there was a lot of hysteria around this when we first got the Rockies. Uh, I think in '91 they were announced that uh, MLB was going to give Colorado a, a baseball team. Us and my, uh, Florida. Uh, they were initially called the Florida Marlins, not the Miami Marlins. Uh, and we were both going to get uh, baseball teams. So, of course, Colorado Rockies and the Florida Marlins had to do an expansion draft, and then they had to pick up free agents from whatever they could. Uh, and initially, the Colorado Rockies played at Mile High Stadium. Mile High Stadium is where the Denver Zephyrs and Denver Bears which were a AAA team. They were AAA affiliate for like the Brewers and the Expos, the Montreal Expos, if anybody remembers them. But they were a AAA affiliate. Well, when we got the Colorado Rockies, the Denver Zephyrs, I think, moved to New Orleans. Um, and the Rockies played baseball at Mile High Stadium. It was a very... If you were a left-handed hitter, it was very, very friendly. Or right-handed hitter, it was a very friendly park to hit home runs in. Because you could only... It's a, a mile high is a football stadium, but the seats actually moved back. You could move the entire East stands were on these rollers, and they could be moved all the way back. I mean, it, it's the weirdest thing to look at, but they used to do it, of course, all the time for Zephyr's games. So, of course, the initial two, uh, initial two or three seasons, I think, were played at mile high. In fact, uh, one of the games, I think, is the highest attendance for a regular season game at well, a little over 80,000 people. I'm not positive on that but we got the Colorado Rockies and we were pretty excited um, now the Florida Marlins slash Miami Marlins have won two World Series the Rockies have been to one and not won it <laughs> so and uh, I don't think the Rockies will ever win a World Series I just don't but uh, they play in a beautiful bar ballpark in Coors Field so it kind of let me know this is baseball season and I've started doing a Colorado sports report so let me think, it's like, well, who are some of my favorite Colorado Rockies of all time? So I'm going to tell you. At number 10, Pedro Astachio, a pitcher. Now, he played for us for only about four or five years, but what I remember of Pedro Astachio, he was kind of, uh, he was kind of an Iron Man. He would throw a lot of pitches, and he would do complete games a lot of the time. He wasn't the best pitcher in the world, but for a while he was the best the Rockies probably had ever had. He was he was a really solid pitcher for us. And I just remember thinking he's a workhorse, but I always thought he could be a little bit better. But Coors Field's never been kind to pitchers. Colorado's never been kind to pitchers. It's still lighter air and the ball flies a little bit better. You can say all you want that you know if you want to argue the other way, you're wrong. It, it's lighter air and the ball does carry a little bit further here than it does at sea level. Um, it's just how physics works. You know, if you if you have if you have denser air, the ball has the ball has to be hit harder to fly farther because the air is a little bit heavier around it. Whereas the higher altitude you get, it's like the air is lighter and the ball can fly through it a lot more freely. So it's like slamming through a brick wall or marshmallow. Which one would you rather hit in? <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, so, but Pedro Astacio was a workhorse, and I always liked Pedro Astacio. We only had him for four seasons, but uh, he was a real good pitcher for us. At number nine, Troy Tulowitzki. Uh, the best part was going to the games and that them going, dun, 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 too low. It's like, it was always fun. It's like, the only, bad, the only bad thing about Tulowitzki, he was a great fielding shortstop. He was a great hitting shortstop. He, was, he had power. He hit for average. He could field. He had a cannon for an arm. He just couldn't stay healthy. And I think that's still the case to this day. Tulowitzki is a great player. He just can never stay healthy. He throws his body all over the field. He gives maximum effort. But I think that's what hurts him. He's a little bit built like Mr. Glass. He breaks easy. But when he's on, he is real real good and when uh, he left the Rockies it, it wasn't a huge deal because he had been injured for us for so long but it still kind of leaves a void at shortstop that the Trevor story is feeling pretty well right now um, 
At number eight, Matt Holiday. Matt Holiday was awesome. It's like uh, he played for us also for four years. He played for the Cardinals, won a World Series with the Cardinals. My favorite moment of Holidays though is I think we were playing in a playoff game with the Padres to see who was going to get into the playoffs. And I think it was the year we went to the World Series. The Rockies won 21 out of 22 games to get to that point. And at the end of the game, I, I think there was even in extra innings, 10th or 11th inning, somewhere in there, Holiday is just chugging around third, and he dives, and he basically lands face first into the ground. But he's given everything he's got, and there was, of course, some question on whether or not he touched the base. He was called safe, but, he, you know, his chin's all scraped up and bleeding and... But you could tell he just really wanted to get there. But the umpire called him safe. There was no replay back then. But there was a little question on whether or not the ball got there first or whether he tagged or even touched the base. But Holiday, he was a very good hitter as well. Really good hitter. Good power. Good fielder. Uh, it was, he was fun to watch. I was sad to see him go. I was sad to see him go to the Cardinals. But happy that he won a World Series with the Cardinals. So that was always pretty awesome for him. Uh now, I know what you're thinking. At some point on this list, there is going to be a, a, a Colorado Rocky that is synonymous with the Rockies. You're just going to have to wait and see. Now, at number seven, Mike Hampton. Now, you're going, well, what did Mike Hampton do? Mike Hampton didn't do anything with you guys. It's like, in fact, I think he went uh, 21 and 25 or something. I think Mike Hampton had like an awful record for us. Um... He was 21 and 28 with a 575 ERA while he was here. And we paid him an eight year, $121 million contract, which at the time was a record for uh, Major League Baseball in dollars. Um, and it still remains the richest in club history. So the Rockies, they don't like to pay people anymore, which is obvious because now most of our free agents go elsewhere because the Rockies just won't pay them. Uh, so if we get a, a, a really good Rocky, we usually just let them go anymore. But there were such high hopes for Hampton. Hampton could hit as a pitcher, and he was just a really good pitcher. In fact, the year before, I think he finished second in the Cy Young voting. Mike Hampton, I think, was our last real big free agent signing pitcher-wise. It might have been Daryl Kyle, but I think Mike Hampton was the last real big pitcher we signed. Daryl Kyle may have come after him. But we thought Mike Hampton was going to be the guy. I mean, we thought this, he had the kind of pitching style that we thought would still translate to playing in Coors Field. But it didn't quite. But he's still one of my, he's still one of my favorite players, let alone Rocky. So I really liked, uh, uh, you know, Mike Hampton. At number six, this is a very recent Rocky, Nolan Arenado. He might, by the end of this, might be, you know, by the time his career is done, he may be my favorite Rocky. I love the way Arenado plays. I love the way he hits. I love the way he fields. I, I, I love his hustle. He is, he is a great young player, and I hope the Rockies pay up. It's like because I think they're gonna if they want to keep Nolan Arenado, I think they're gonna have to eclipse that 121 million dollar mark that they gave to Hampton to keep him around. Because Arenado, if he ever becomes a free agent, I'm thinking the Yankees, the Cubs, the Sox, the you know, some of those teams that are willing to spend money pretty freely will heavily go after this guy. So, you know, Colorado, you got to snap. You got to keep him. You got to you got to keep Arenado. You know, you want a guy to stay a Rocky forever. You know, maybe look at keeping the left side of that infield together and Trevor Story and Arenado. At number five, we're in the top five. This is my favorite pitcher that ever played for the Rockies, and he played for us for a very short amount of time, Umbaldo Jimenez. Umbaldo Jimenez had 19 wins in 2010. He had 214 strikeouts in 2010. He had a, I think, a 2.66 ERA in 2000. He, he had two shutouts. The guy was a beast in 2010. The Rockies have never had a 20-game winner. Umbaldo Jimenez came the closest, and he was a beast. He hasn't done much since... Uh, which is sad. He had one magical year with us. That's weird. That <laughs> a pitcher's best season with, with the Rockies. Um, at number four, Vinny Castilla. I remember when we got Vinny Castilla, when there was another guy we got, uh, I think his name was uh, I think his name was Juan Benavides. And I actually thought Juan Benavides might be a better player 
<laughs> I was so wrong. Castillo was awesome. He hit for average. He hit for power. He was part of the Blake Street Bombers. Oh, it was fun to watch. It was he. He wasn't a very vocal player because I mean I think he didn't speak a lot of English, but he was he was solid for so many years. He just always plugged along, hitting over thirty home runs and always batting around three hundred. Played a solid third base. So yeah, Vinny Castilla. Number three, Dante Bichette. That's right, we're getting into a point where I liked a lot of the Blake Street Bombers, and Dante Bichette was awesome. He just had that he had that terrible mullet. I think we got him from the Brewers. We might have even gotten him in the in, you know in the expansion draft. But Bichette, he could hit the ball a mile, or he would whiff on it, missing it by a mile. But he was always so much fun to watch in those early years when the Rockies just tried to outscore you. They didn't care about the pitching. They were just trying to outscore you. It's like there was there's that whole thing that there is no lead that is ever safe in Denver. There isn't. There was never a lead that was safe in that ball in this ballpark at that time especially. And Bichette was always fun to watch. I mean, there he's got a classic home run that he hits where he just he just bangs it out with this quick swing, drops kind of drops the bat on the ground in a weird way and pumps his fist and it was like, yeah. Bichette was awesome. Number two, the big cat, Andres Galarraga. We picked this guy up in free agent for a bargain. I think we got him for four years and $12 million or something like that because I think that they thought he was at the end of his career. I loved Andres Galarraga. He's such a big guy. The reason he had the name the big cat, he used to was so agile at first. He used to make some amazing, amazing plays at first base. And I think he could do the splits as big as he was. I mean, he used to just, like, really reach out there to get that ball. He had, I mean, it was almost like the closer I can get, the faster the ball can get into the glove and I can get you out. And Galarraga could hit for power. He could hit for average. Again, another Blake Street bomber. And an amazing one at that. So before I get to my number one player, I'm going to give a few honorable mentions. Navy Perez, Iron Man. Guy played all the time. Solid player. Uh, Dexter Fowler, really fast, kind of always wanted to be a home run hitter, but he was, I like Dexter. Uh, Eric Young, Eric Young, I think, hit one, the first home run at Coor, or at, uh, for the Colorado Rockies at home. Uh, Charlie Hayes, I was always a Charlie Hayes fan, and when the Rockies got him for a little while at third base, I was not like a lot of the third basemen, but Charlie Hayes, he, just kind of a little chunky guy, but I like Charlie Hayes. Uh, Ryan Spielberg, Spilly, he was funny. He wasn't a great player, but he was always funny. And he wore the number 19. And also Jason Giambi. This, he came to the Rockies after he kind of had his uh, problem with the PEDs and kind of got shamed a little bit. Um, played with the athletics. But he was, he was a mentor in the, in the clubhouse, and that was always good. The young players needed so He'd been there, done that, and kind of had a story to tell. And I think he mentored those young players. But my number one player, Larry Walker. That's right, Larry Walker. Larry Walker is my favorite Colorado Rocky of all time. Great sense of humor. He's Canadian, I think. But he was a power left-handed hitter. Hit for average. I think he batted 379 one year. It's like, holy smokes. I mean, flirting with the 400 mark. He was so awesome, and he hit for power. He wasn't super fast, but he could field. He could field pretty good. Had a pretty good arm and right. Uh, but yeah, my favorite. And what my favorite Larry Walker moment is in the All-Star game. He's facing Randy Johnson, and he wasn't going to face him left-handed. He turned his helmet backwards so the ear flap would be the right way, and then faced him right-handed <laughs> because he wasn't going to stand in there left-handed against him in the All-Star game. It was just a funny moment. And you'll notice one omission if you are a Rockies fan, and this is controversial. Todd Helton. I don't like Todd Helton. I'm not a big Todd Helton fan. He was rumored to be on PEDs a long time ago. Tiny little rumor, never really caught traction. But it was shortly after he hit like 40 home runs in a season. And then he became a guy that only would hit about 20 home runs. Still hit for average. Very, really good fielder at first base. But for the money we were paying him, he should have been a 35 to 40 home run a year guy. I always thought we were overpaid for him. For what he actually did, I thought he was overpaid. So what do you think of that list? Do you think that I'm crazy with Todd Helton? I don't. I was never a huge fan when he started going downhill. So to the troops, past, present, and future, thanks for the freedom.